if you're a white guy into Asian women, you have my blessing. You know, just learn how to talk to them without being creepy. So one of the easiest ways to be creepy is to approach them with a irrelevant factoid, you know, and, and don't tell them you like anime. That's <laughs> oh, <God. yeah. laughs> like if you love any Asian stuff, like save that to date three. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Haya Podcast, where we are always offensive and sometimes funny. Uh, I'm your host, Nigel Ung, as usual, and today we have a special guest joining us. Well, n- not a special guest, just our producer, the Haya Podcast producer. Say hello to Matt. Yes. Hey guys, how are you doing, Matt? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. You work on many different podcasts, not just mine. It's very true. You know? Yep, yeah. I do. Oh, I came from. I was doing an astrology podcast today. Oh, so I've gone, really? I've come from like knowing all about my Sagittarius and the rising moon and all of that to speaking with you about offensive things. So <laughs> I, yes, here I am. Let's do it. But this is this is Matt. He's the producer of the podcast. He's been producing all the episodes. So. What do you guys think, Nisa and nephews? You doing doing a good job so far? I think I think I'm doing a good job so far, man. Thanks. I didn't realize this was gonna be like an appraisal live on air. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think it's become that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's okay. I think I'm doing a good job, and uh, I'm a little bit of a control freak as well. So uh, it's been it it took a bit of a learning process for us to get to the same wavelength. Yeah, I think you were relieved when you called at midnight, and I was like. Hey Nigel, yeah, I've I had know. a couple of beers, but oh, oh man, no, I didn't, I didn't realize I'd missed the frame there. And yeah, I mean, to be fair, you played it to me, and I was like, oh, good. Oh, I'm good, glad good, I did good. that on the first episode. I'm glad <laughs> you were out for beers because that means you were still awake. Yep, that's you know? true. Because I just learned that Matt is a married man, and no married people. I used to be one myself. We go to bed <laughs> at like nine thirty, right? You watch a couple Netflix episodes, you watch Money <laughs> Heist, and you just fall asleep on the couch. And your wife has to nudge you awake and, you know, let's go to bed, honey, let's go to bed. okay. So I'm glad you're out getting beers and stuff. Yes, listeners, there was one episode where I, our episodes go live 6 a.m. Wednesday, UK time. And it was like 11.30 p.m. Tuesday night, the night before. And I realized, oh shit, there's a missing frame here. The volume's all fucked. So we had to work last minute to get it through to you guys. Uh, well, Matt had to work last minute. I, I, went, to bed. I went to bed. That's a lot of a producer. Matt, but uh, I, I appreciate I appreciate the effort, the co- attention to detail. It's, it's important, you know? It is important. You know, it's nice to work with someone who is, is so specific with things because a lot of the time I have the opposite feeling where I work on something. I'm like, has anybody listened to this before it's actually going out on air? So Really? They don't yeah, listen? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can't ever say that, but yeah, I feel like a lot of people don't. You should include like some hate speech in, in the <laughs> middle of it. You know, our podcast includes some something crazy by Alex Jones or something. Yeah, all women need to be subservient to men. Just slide it in there. Just get a bit of Rogan in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a bit of right wing Rogan in there. <laughs> Let, let's try that. And then you can just say, oh, I didn't know what happened. I think it's just a Premiere Pro glitch. <laughs> it's a, a, Adobe sometimes does that, you know. I pay him a fair wage. <laughs> I pay you more than London living wage, you know. Yeah, so I'm a better guy than Jeff Bezos. I'm very you grateful. <laughs> I let you use the bathrooms whenever you need to. Yeah, no complaints there from Matt. Coming from Asia, you, sh- you should be surprised that I'm paying you that much because like, you know what we do in Asia, right? We just get it made cheap, as cheap as possible. So is it hurting you to like pay me fairly? Are you like, um... A, a, a little bit, a little bit. And my genetics and my Asianness in me is like, why am I not ripping him off? <laughs> Why am I treating him with ethics? <laughs> Why am I so ethical, you know? But I guess I've lived, I'm influenced by the Western world now. Yeah, you're you know? westernized. This I know. is it. I pay people fairly now. It's, it's <laughs> hard. <laughs> the Western world has its perks sometimes, you know? I feel that white guilt now too. Every time I go to an Asian resort, or like a non-first world place, you go to these resorts and then there are these little third world servants serving their Mai Tais to you. And you feel bad for them and you want to tip them. But they don't really do tips there. So you just you leave money on the little plate. And then they, they come chasing down after you. Hey, sir, sir, you forgot your money, sir. And I'm like, it's for you, you fucking prick. Can I ask you something, actually? Because, yeah, yeah, please. Like, Is it offensive? Make sure it's offensive. <laughs> you can't ask if it's offensive, I mean, Matt. It's based on a stereotype. Let's do helps. it. I but... love it already. <laughs> so I was in... Um, 
Wong Ki, the place in Chinatown. Okay. And the people I was with told me, like, yeah, you don't leave a tip or anything. And I was like, but we've had a meal and like we've had like, and they said, no, 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 in their culture, you just don't tip. It's offensive. And I was like, well, shit, I don't want to offend them. Uh-huh. But at the same time, I felt like I should tip. It was just, I really enjoyed this food. It was great. So I would love you to debunk for me. I'm generalizing in Asian countries. Is it an art? Should you be tipping? Listen, in Asian countries, giving people money is always a plus. We might say it's offensive, but we'll still take the money anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it depends on the Asian country in all seriousness. I think in Japanese culture, um, maybe it's not offensive, but it's very, very unusual. Okay. You know, even Japanese restaurants here, they give you a bill, everything's included because they think there's the, a the service charge. And correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, I'm not Japanese. I think my brother sh- should tell me this. He lives in Tokyo. But I would say most Asian countries, we don't really tip. Okay. You know? That's interesting. Is but it not because it's built into the price? Like the food? The no, price because you- our service sucks. <laughs> what, like, have you been to a Chinese place? And be an insult. You're white. They're gonna insult you. I know. I know they're gonna insult you. <laughs> it's really sad because I always want. Maybe it's a Western thing, but I always want to like befriend the waiter. And yeah. you're right. When I like go to Asian restaurants, coming, they right? they don't like it at all. Like I'll try to have a little bit of chat or a little bit like tell a joke. No, and nothing. No, like, it's the toughest audience they don't you care. will ever get. Yeah, they hate me, and I look <laughs> like this. <laughs> Because I can't, I, I speak a bit of Cantonese, but not enough, and they can hear that. Oh, he's trying to speak Cantonese. You know, they don't want the chat because I think in the Asian restaurants, they just want to turn over the customers <laughs> as quickly as possible. That's how they make their money. You know. Yeah, in one place, they literally said to us like, "Can you go now?" Yeah. We were like, <laughs> oh, "We haven't like finished our drinks yet." And they're like, "No, you need to leave." <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. We do that to people. So yeah, don't don't tip. Don't tip. Save your money. If you wanna, if you feel bad for us, donate to an Asian charity or something, you know. <laughs> Save your money, don't tip. You know, because if you tip, everybody at the restaurant gets paid shit, you know. So the chefs get paid shit, the, the waiters get paid shit. They're probably the family members and then they don't get paid anything. So if you tip one of the waitresses, they could be like the daughter of the, the, uh, the one of the waitresses. And then she, she'll get paid more than her mom, you know, on the, oh at that God. night service. So do you want that to happen? Well, now I would feel even guiltier leaving money. Do you know what I mean? I'm causing a whole family dispute. Yeah, they're going to be in a fight later. <laughs> they're going to be at each other's throats because this daughter got this tip from a white guy and she, now she thinks she owns the family, <laughs> you know? So I, I, I wouldn't tip. I wouldn't tip unless you go to a up, more upscale Asian restaurant. But a casual family restaurant, don't bother. So as a producer of this podcast, Matt, have you prepared anything? You know, yeah. have you prepared some talking points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, know, have, you need to earn your keep, right? I'm not just paying you for nothing. So, yeah, <laughs> tell, give me, give me, give me some topics. Well, what okay. have you, what have you discovered? I was gonna ask you about a British politician's toupee, but let's leave that because that's pretty dry. Yeah. So, so gonna go. Have from you there. worked on the podcast, man? <laughs> it has to be either Asian, food related, or offensive. You got to pick two well, out of the three. Well. Maybe I've, I've got three out of three here. Oh, okay. I don't okay. want to get people's expectations too high. Okay. Let, let's hear it. Let's hear so it. it's about North Korea. Okay. Tick. It's about Kim Jong-il. Okay. So yeah, it's going to be offensive in some way, isn't it? Yeah, but he's old news though. He's dead for how many years now? Is he dead? Yeah. <laughs> how how else do you think Kim Jong Un could be the the su- su- successor? I thought he was just being like a nice guy, being like, "Oh, go on, son, you have a go." No, I, I. Is he dead? <laughs> I, yeah. Oh man. Have it's... you not seen the memes? Kim Jong Il to Kim Jong Dead. You know. Uh, well, yeah, okay. anyway. What so did he do? What did he do? He. What did this dead irrelevant guy do? Well, this is not starting well already. In North Korea, they are claiming that Kim Jong Il created the burrito. Oh. I mean, this is big stuff. Is it? Ten years ago, he introduced these. I think they're called wheat wraps to mm-hmm. a population who was struggling with food shortages. So it was like, you know, I'll give you this. It will fill you up because yeah, burritos are like beefy, aren't they? Yeah, big. Let's break it down for a <laughs> sec. Look at the Metro UK, decent publication. I, I yep. think I've had interviews published in there before. That, this, is, this sounds like a factoid you would use when you're trying to hit on an Asian woman at a party. You know, you know, you know how sometimes, you know, I don't want to shit on all white people, but sometimes, you know, I have f- friends tell me this because I think it's more of a Asian woman problem. They would get white guys who are kind of into Asian women, but they they do it in the most awkward way. I think it's totally okay if you're a white guy and into Asian women, you could because you know we have the most beautiful women. You know what I mean? Asian Asian women are like are like nice. 
right? <laughs> you were married, right? You see, I'm married, right? but I can appreciate. Yeah, they are the pretty. Yeah. Pretty What's your wife's race? Is your wife uh, white. White. Okay. Okay. But Asian women are, are nice. So if you're a white guy into Asian women, you have my blessing. You know, just learn how to talk to them without being creepy. So one of the easiest ways to be creepy is to approach them with a irrelevant factoid. You know, and and don't tell them you like anime. That's oh, awesome. God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if you love any Asian stuff, like save that to date three. You know, keep your Pokemon hobbies. Keep your Naruto <laughs> knowledge. Like. Keep it to date three, okay? And then if if you're lucky enough to get an Asian woman back on your place on the first date, just hide all your Asian paraphernalia away, <laughs> okay? Just have some have some white people shit, you know? And then gradually, <laughs> can you imagine like having a bookshelf and then first date, the Asian woman goes to your place, it's just Jane Austen <laughs> and Shakespeare. <laughs> and then second date, she goes to your place again and then suddenly one Naruto manga <laughs> books and hmm, was it there when I came last time? So, then you can just go, yeah, it's always been there. I don't know what your problem is. You know, you have to gaslight her gently. <laughs> That's how you come across as not creepy to Asian women. If you're a white guy, you have to gaslight them gently into thinking you're not a creep, you know? So you gradually, you know, maybe third day she goes back to your place, a Hello Kitty comes up, you know? And then, was that there? Was it on your shelf, Nathan? <laughs> was it on your shelf when I came back to your place the first time? I said, yeah, I said, yeah, 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 it was always on there. Uh, Hello Kitty, yeah, we fucked to it. Remember that? I was railing you from behind. You were looking it up at it and it was, it was good, you know? You, you were looking at it. That's what I look for to, to make myself come. But, uh, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> so you should say, that's what I look at to make myself not come so quickly, you know? Just ha- Hello Kitty. Which one's worse? I look at Hello Kitty to not come or I look at Hello Kitty to come? Wh- which one's worse, Matt? To come. To come. Worse, yeah. To really? not come, I think, is like, that's fair. People do that technique, think about other things. Yeah. It's but... not as weird as <laughs> coming to Hello Kitty. I think it's weirder to have a Hello Kitty in there for the sole purpose of making you not come. <laughs> right? Yeah. Can you imagine buying, buying one? People's... Hello Kitty is for, for children. And then you're just going to the children's toy shop. And then you're in the West. So it's, you, you're going to get it from like eBay or something, from some other sketchy weeb. You know, do you know what a wee- weeb is? I have never heard of a weeb. What's it's that? a person who's really into manga and Japanese stuff. But uh, if you are white and you are into Asian women, unfortunately, you have to hide your weebiness for like the first few dates until it's too late, until she actually likes you, and then you can creep her out with the Asian shit. That's my advice. I know, I know there are a lot of white guys who listen to me and watch Uncle Roger videos who are into Asian girls. I see you. I see you. I'm partial to to Asian women myself. You know. But then I have the I, I I grew up around Asian women and I think you, you you like the people you grew up with, right? Do yeah. you find it annoying though if you're in a bar and like you see some pretty Asian women and there's mm-hmm. white guys just like surrounding them because you're like I know she would rather come and talk to me, but she's been blocked by these white people. Would that annoy you? Uh, no, I I don't walk around in that sense of entitlement, Matt. I don't walk around thinking oh Asian women would love to talk to me. You know they can't <laughs> talk to. Asian women are people too, you know. They are free willed. <laughs> what are you trying to say, Matt? I'm not what trying are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm just you asking know? questions. I'm getting the horoscope podcast to. I'm getting the astrology podcast to fire you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so you have more time to spend on ha- the Haya podcast and come up with better topics than Kim Jong Il, who is irrelevant now that he's there for the last decade. But the principle is that if you're a okay. dictator, you okay. can do whatever you like. Obviously, there's lots of horrible stuff. Let's no, let's just brush over that. Yeah. Let's just forget that for now. Let's focus on the positives. Yeah, of like like claiming food. You know, if you could claim any food in the whole world as your own, that's amazing. Like, what would you do? I would deport Jamie Oliver. That's <laughs> what I would do. I would, if I were a dictator, I would tell Jamie, I would tell Jamie, like, okay, okay, Jamie, I could lynch your whole family, but I'm not going to do that. Okay? Instead, I would like you to quit. Okay? You have five kids. Do you want to keep seeing your five children? Do you want to keep seeing Poppy Seed and Bobby Brown? I, they have all have weird names, <laughs> like Butterfly Cactus. Do you want to keep seeing Butterfly Cactus? What are, What are Jamie's kids' names? Uh, let me find out. Yeah, yeah, they're all weird. Poppy Honey. Yeah, Poppy Honey. Do you want to keep seeing Poppy Honey? Petal Blossom. Petal. Jesus Christ. Okay. Pe- oh, Petal Blossom Rainbow Oliver. She's twelve. That's one child. Yeah, that's one child. Pet- <laughs> Oh my god, you're killing me, woman. Hi. That is my biggest disappointment for the week. Jamie Oliver's children's names. 
Petal Blossom Honey Kombucha Oliver? <laughs> There's、That's、another the one, Buddy Bear Maurice Oliver. Wow. I didn't know this. This is amazing. I'm going to name my children like Hello Kitty Naruto Ung or some shit. <laughs> okay, if I were a dictator, I'll first tell Jamie to be, hey, Jamie, if you want to see your children again, can you give them like normal names? We have to, we have, we have to cut this shit. Or just give them one. Johnny, yeah, you just can have one. one. And not Blossom. <laughs> She's not a Powerpuff girl, okay? Is that one of the Powerpuff girls? It is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did I have that knowledge? Yeah, yeah. I don't even know. You can't name your children that, man. Okay, so I, I'll tell them, Jamie, if you want to see your kids again, stop cooking. No more cookbooks for you. You, you, you get to be a painter or something. <laughs> or ask your wife to cook. I think Jamie's wife is probably a better cook than Jamie. Ooh. You know? Ooh, Ooh. roasted. <laughs> Jamie is very cheeky, you know, because、um, like he's never interacted with me on any public platform. But every time I post a video about him, it gets copyright strike.、Oh, it gets it? copyright claim. Only the Jamie videos, the Gordon videos, never get strike. The other YouTubers I review never get strike. And I know it's him fucking around. There's some fuckery there because when you get、uh, for people who don't know on YouTube, sometimes they issue copyright、uh, claims, but are you know just automated. And it'll tell you in the email, oh, your video's been automatically flagged as copyrighted material. And I understand that because the algorithms will see if that picture match, right? Yeah. But for Jamie's videos, it's always a, after a manual review, this claimant d e c i d e your video infringes their copyright. I was like, manual review, huh? Manual review? Who's reviewing this? Is it Jamie <laughs> and his computer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can run her again. Oh. But surely, like, would he not think that any attention is good? That's what people say, right? Any yeah, attention is good. I think it's good. Yeah, I even reviewed his cookbook, and now more people know about his cookbook. Yeah, exactly. To me, I view it as, as a fun rivalry. It's very one sided. He, <laughs> he hasn't responded yet. So, have you never met him in real life? No, no. What would you say if you ever met him in real life? Because that, that could definitely happen. What would you do? Yeah, I don't know. I'll be like, hey, Jamie. Would you speak to him? Or would you, like, tr- try and hide and, like, avoid him at all <laughs> the, costs? The thing is, my instinct would be to try and hide. You know, You create a work, you gotta stand behind your work. I stand behind my work. <laughs> so, to do that, I would have to, you know, I have to not hide from him. I don't have to, you know, if he's not willing to shake my hand, that's cool, but I, I do at least acknowledge him. Say,、like, hey, Jamie, how's it going? Okay, and、that's、he's、it. like, the fuck you been doing, Nigel? I know you. It's me. I'm watching these videos and giving the copyright claims on them. Oh. What are you doing? I mean, I'll, first, I'll say, well, thanks for watching, Jamie. <laughs>、yeah. And how's that, how's that egg fried rice going? Is it getting better now? Is it getting better now, Jamie? How's your Thai green curry? And also, I think if you're at Jamie's level, multi millionaire, multiple houses, big food empire, you know, no more restaurants, but that's just one part of his whole business portfolio. Have a sense of humor, right? You know? Yeah, I'm just a little YouTuber guy shitting on you. Just, just take <laughs> it. I know what you're doing, Jamie. Stop issuing your copyright claims.、Uh, I didn't know if I was, if was, was going to be able to record this podcast because I'm suffering from food poisoning.、Uh, just, just slowly recovering from it. And、um, because I, 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 think, I think it was the oysters, man.、Uh, so I feel a bit lightheaded now. But I, I, I am surprised anytime I get food poisoning when I'm in the West. You know, it's not supposed to happen. Food poisoning is supposed to be like a, you go on holiday in Asia thing. Right? You, go to, you go to Thailand. Like, last time I got food poisoning, it was the worst, worst time ever. I was in、uh, Hanoi in Vietnam. And then when you're in Vietnam, you get food poisoning. You're like, nah, I'm supposed to. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, part, it's part of the game. You go, you go to Asia, the food there is different.、Uh, your stomach's not used to, you know? You, 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 you get food poisoning. As Uncle Roger would say, why so weak? Why so weak? You know? So that's, that's what Vietnamese food does to your stomach. So that, that was bad, man. I had. I had the shits and I went kayaking. That's not a good, good at,、uh, com- combination of activities, you know?、Uh, I was with my family as well, so that was nice. So they were taking care of me. It was all good. And th- the funny thing was, we all, we all eventually got food poisoning. My mom, my dad, me, brother, sister, we all went on the trip together. We all eventually got food poisoning except my dad. What food did you have? I think it was the fish, fish cake, the fish and squid cake. <laughs> you know, if it, they call it the fish squid. <laughs> we, were on a, we went on a cruise to see Halong Bay, right? It's, a, it's a, one of the seven wonders of the world, and then you have to take a cruise to, because it's in the middle, middle of the ocean. So we all got sick on that cruise because we all ate the same thing, except my dad. And they, by the end of the cruise, my dad was like, Oh, this made you sick? And he just kind of just kept eating. He was the one who finished the whole plate. 
all four of us, we couldn't touch that fish squid thing anymore. But he was just eating it. Yeah, calling us pussies, you know. Have, uh, you, have you learned your lesson having oysters? Uh, you're, I'm not going to give up oysters, man. Are they that good? Yeah. Do you not like oy- oysters? Well, I've got a fear of choking. And my dad told me... When fear, you... Wait, what? Fear of choking? You <laughs> know that's in now, in, right? Man. You know that's what people do in bed now, right? I don't know. <laughs> when did you get married, Matt? When did you get married? Uh, 2018. 2018. That was when choking started becoming in the vogue. <laughs> so that's... Do you choke your wife in bed, Matt? <laughs> do you... No? I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> Always offensive, sometimes funny, sometimes revealing. <laughs> so, okay, fine. I, I'll just assume you choke your wife in bed. You look like a kind of guy. What do you think, listeners? Does Matt look like the kind of guy who chokes his wife in bed? Leave a comment. But uh, <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a lot of people are probably going to say yes. You know, don't, don't let his innocence fool you. I think he, uh, he, he, he chokes people. Uh, last night I got food poisoning was in Hanoi in Vietnam. Uh, but it doesn't it doesn't make me um, every time I get food poisoning, I don't stop eating the food that caused it. In Vietnam, I think it was either the fish squid, the fish cake thing, or they have a coffee that has a raw egg yolk in it. Yeah. What? So it could be that too. If you eat raw eggs in Vietnam. But right? isn't that like a thing like gym buffs do? They just have like raw egg all the time. Yeah, you're, talking, you're thinking of Rocky, I think. But I don't know. I I, I think. But, but was it nice? Because like that makes sense because you're doing it to try and you know work out or whatever. But just in your coffee, coffee is such a sacred thing. Why would you put an egg in it? Um, it adds a silky texture to it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite thing, but it's like something you have to do when you're in Hanoi. Okay. You know the okay. egg egg coffee, and maybe it's the egg coffee that gave gave me salmonella, <laughs> but. Man, it was it was bad, man. I was throwing up and having the shits. <laughs> it it was bad. I thought I was walking home from the coffee shop and then it suddenly hit me, this nausea. Uh and then I was like, oh shit, something's wrong. And then I went back home and said, I, I can't go for dinner yet, man. Let me just uh, lie down for half an hour. And then I lied down, woke up, it was midnight and I had to go throw up. <laughs> so that was that was rough. Uh so that was my last food poisoning experience. And then the previous time, the time before that, I got food poisoning in Cuba. Yeah, I visited Cuba. I had sushi in Cuba, so that was a terrible <laughs> idea. In Cuba, everything's rationed, you know? So I don't know how fresh the food is, probably not. And Cuba is not known for their food, but we were at a resort. So that like Thursday evening, they had sushi night or something. And yeah, that was that was bad too. Both my ex-wife and I, we were still together at the time. Uh, we were both having diarrhea in the same hotel room. So that, that was bad. That was bad. But... Food poisoning here is is pleasant. You know, I, I got it two days ago and now I'm okay and just talking shit on the podcast again. You know, have a little bit of a uh, little bit of the shits, but uh, it's, uh, I'm done with it today. You know, so don't worry, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I just move over here. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I'm I'm more concerned about my recording equipment. I'm not gonna ruin <laughs> them with my shits. You know. Ugh. Yeah, but like, so you've had food poisoning. Yeah. A sensible person would just like keep their food completely boring and stale. Do you know what I mean? Just bread. Yeah, but then I But where would... are you going for dinner tonight? I'm getting Indian food. Yeah. Like, you're kind of dancing with, with death a bit, aren't you? Well, the thing is, if I can keep it safe and have bread and soup, but then I'll, I'll have food poisoning and I'll be sad. <laughs> yeah. You know? But if I have adventurous foods, the foods I usually like and enjoy, I will have food poisoning, but I'll be happy. That, that's how I think. And yesterday... I, yesterday was a rough day too because I had to be in town in London all day, central London. Uh, I had a dentist appointment and then I had an interview with Waitrose, you know, one of the fanciest grocery store brands in the UK. You know, they, had, they, have, they have a magazine, did you know? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, so Waitrose magazine interviewed me. <laughs> I have no idea why because uh, uh, I, I don't shop there. I, buy, I go to the Asian <laughs> grocery stores, you know. And then I had a haircut. So it was three things I had to do in central London. I was just praying. I was, don't shit myself. Don't shit myself. Don't shit myself. Um, and it's very hard to... I, I was glad... Like, if you're stuck in a dentist chair and you have to shit yourself, that is the worst place to, to have... You know, to shit yourself, isn't it? Uh, yeah. You can't really escape. You know, you can't be like, uh, stop, stop for a second there, doc. And then just rush off. <laughs> you have to shit in a dentist chair. You know? And, <laughs> and then the dentist would have to... If like let's say you 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 you're just lying down right in a, in the dentist chair and then you shit yourself 
and the dentist notices. And then you, you can't just hop off the chair because the chair is in its inclined position, right? So you have to shit yourself and then the chair has to go. Bzzz. The dentist has to like move the chair back to upright again to let you go. Bzzz, bzzz, as, as you're just wallowing in your shit. Shit's going through the crevices of the dentist chair, you know, and the dental hygienist is just shocked. The assistant there just shocked, you know, and I just signed up to do Invisalign. Did I sign up for this? What is what the fuck is this? And uh, but I didn't shit myself at a den- dentist appointment, so that's good. I'm proud of you. Yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> Hello, niece and nephew. It's Uncle Roger. If you're enjoying podcast so far, smack the like button like how your parents smack you and subscribe to podcast channel. Also, go leave five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcast app you have on your phone. Nephew Nigel telling me he read every single comment. Hi, yeah, I don't know why he's so needy. Anyway, back to show. I'll move on now to some listener emails. I've been getting quite a few. So email your questions, your comments, and your life stories to hiyapod at gmail.com. Uh, mainly stuff that disappointed you recently, like like this person here. Uh, we'll let Matt read out the email because, uh, you know, Honestly, I, I still don't know why I'm paying him. So we will let him read out the email, get, get, you know, do a bit of work on the podcast. Yeah, let's hope I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, take it away. So this is from an Asian woman. She didn't want to be specifically named, so we're going to keep her anonymous. Okay. Um, Asian women, huh? Yeah. Your favorite, man. <laughs> yeah? I think by the end of this podcast, <laughs> I'm going to turn Matt into a, a white man with an Asian fetish. Brilliant. Yeah, you're gonna get. I'm gonna make you either open up the marriage, or you know, I don't want to say the big divorce word because it seems like it's going really well. Let's leave the D you know? word out of it. Let's leave yeah, the D yeah. word out of it. But an open marriage will be cool, you know, right? Thanks, Nigel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, coming from a divorcee. Okay, let's, let's we'll talk about marriage next time. All right. Not sure if this would count as fetishizing me specifically, but last year I met a guy from a university chatting platform, helping students to make friends in lockdown. When we first met, he already assumed we were dating without asking me out when he said, we can take things slower if you like. Yeah, that's a bit crazy, huh? I rejected him, but we basically messaged every day, brackets, partly out of lockdown boredom. Okay, (sighs) that's... You can't reject someone and then message them every day. That's just sending wrong messages, you know. You And guys are dumb, (laughs) you know. If you get messages from you every day, we're like, oh, she likes me. As we both love Japanese culture, brackets, he is very much a weeb, le- which I know what it means now. That's ah, great. Yeah, yeah this great. is good. He's very much a weeb learning Japanese and didn't have any other Asian friends. Then he sent me this video from abroad in Japan and said it was hilarious. What I found strange was none of the other people in the comments or the presenter of the abroad in Japan video seemed to have an issue with the abuse of a Japanese woman who doesn't defend herself against two white men. Okay, that, that, that sounds quite heavy. We've got to take a look at that video. So listeners don't know, Abroad in Japan is a YouTube channel where it's a white guy abroad in Japan. And I, I find it quite fascinating. I watch it, their videos sometimes. Shut up! Don't say a word. Yeah! <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, so uh, for people on the audio only, it's uh, so basically a Japanese woman's walking down the street and then two white guys come and kidnap her, try to take her stuff, like, you know, held up a knife at her and then they're learning how to say, take anything you want, but with this jazzercise soundtrack. (laughs) And he said that he found this hilarious. I mean, to be honest, we, we laughed. Didn't we? So it's true. Yes, I I can see how it's triggering too because yeah. because because you are guys, you know. So we don't really live with this constant fear yeah. that women live with sometimes, you know. I think it was more the hard cut from that horrible scene to this like random yeah. song and dance. We are laughing at the absurdity and the bizarreness because as guys we have the privilege of not having the baggage. Look at how woke I am, man! Look at how <laughs> fucking look at me. Just compassion. Something my <laughs> therapist told me I need to work on. And I told her, like, I fucking nailed it, mate. Compassion. All right, let's watch a little bit more of it. Because I think there's going to be more English phrases you're going to learn. Take anything you want. Hand me your bag. <laughs> Don't move. 
If you do, I'll kill you. <laughs> Back to the cut. Spare me my life. Spare me my life. Spare me my life. Spare me my life. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, you get the picture, listeners. What did the, the, the email say again? That she. Yeah, well, he sent it over, found, finding it hilarious. Okay. And then she says she could have been overreacting. But this was also taking place in context of gender violence taking place in the UK. She feels guilty, but in the end, she ended the friendship with the guy and didn't feel like meeting up with him anymore because it alarmed her so much that he had sent her this video. He did. He apologized mm. about it a lot and has messaged her since, but she doesn't think she can get over the feelings. She says one day she hopes she can. What does she mean by gender violence in the UK? Was there a period where there was a lot of that? Yeah, I mean, I imagine this happened back in, I think it was February or March, when Sarah Everard was oh. uh, murdered. Yeah. If, okay, if this guy, for listeners outside the UK who don't know, Sarah Everard was this uh, a woman who was walking home one night and then sh- she basically got murdered by a um, police officer, oh, right? So bad. Very, very tragic. Okay, if the guy sent her this video during the Sarah Everard case, then it's like, okay, man, like, look, you're oblivious at best, insensitive at worst, because there literally is a woman being held in a strangle. And then, sure, the cut to the the jazzercise, take anything you want, <laughs> was was funny. But like you know, as as you, you have to empathize with women, right? They are, they are fearing for their lives. How guilty know. does he feel sending that? Because he obviously wanted to speak to her. But I, we also d- it. we also don't know if he sent it during this time. No, that's true. Right? We need, we need more context. Yeah, we need more context. So right, right back in, right back in, listener, and let us let us know more. I feel like it's forgivable though. You know, because I feel like he has no ill intent. He's just maybe a bit dumb and... Unless he sends another one. And it's not the next video on. It's even worse than that. (laughs) Unless... uh, Unless during the George Floyd protests, (laughs) he sent in something where it's not a Japanese woman being in a strangle. It's a a, a black guy and then a cop strangling him. And then it's okay, man. Once is obliviousness, but twice, I think you have malicious intent here. So... (laughs) Hey, listen, that weird music video, still better than Hamilton. Oh, yeah. no. I didn't like that musical. Take <laughs> anything you want, still better than Hamilton. That's where I stand on <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> but also, nothing about that seems like he has an Asian fetish too. You know, like he could be a weep and and he, he might have an Asian fetish. But I think, I think some guys, like we found it hilarious. Yeah. You know, I think because because we are guys again, we are guys. We don't have that b- that baggage. Not I, want, I don't want to call it baggage because it makes it sound negative. We don't have that that fear of uh, walking down the street and then ha- have, having someone just kind of following us or yeah. you know uh, 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 threaten us with violence. So maybe it's easier for us to laugh. Uh, but I I would say this to the listener who wrote in. I think he didn't write it with any ill intent. I think he he really did want to be your friend or maybe even more. So I think it's, if you're uncomfortable and you don't really want to talk to him anymore, that that's fine. That That's that's your choice too. I don't like telling people they're overreacting because it, it never ends well. It never, no. have you tried telling anyone <laughs> they're overreacting? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Has it ever ended well? Uh, no, not no. a single time. Not a single t- <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> It's a trap too, listeners. Uh, not 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 for this listener, but in general, if a partner is asking, "Am I overreacting?" You want to say no. You want to just go with no. You're totally reasonable, <laughs> babes. Uh, but <laughs> without knowing more about our circumstance, I don't want to say you're overreacting, listener who wrote in. Uh, but I also do think he has uh, he didn't have ill intent. He's just being a bit stupid, a bit naive, a bit a bit. Of a guy, a dumb doofus. Yeah, I don't think she should cancel him just yet. Do you know what I mean? Give him another chance. Let's see. It, what what does he send next? Let's judge him on that. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? If he sends something <laughs> nice, you could be like, okay, it was a mistake. You should message him back. Say, hey, dude, um, I decided to be your friend again. Any more videos you've, you found funny recently? 
<laughs> Let's see what he says back. <laughs> right? If it's a funny TikTok or if it's another like gender violence one, then you're like, okay, let, let, let's cut him off. If he sends you a clip of Bill Cosby, <laughs> then it's time to cut ties with this person. But if he sends you something innocent, you know, then, it, then it's fine. Yeah, hopefully it's just like an animal video. But like a nice one, not the weird ones. The weird ones are fine too. I mean, if you're into that. There's so many things you can do with animals instead of just having them have pets, you know? I right. think we are, we are not utilizing animals enough in this society, right? <laughs> What's your take on that? What's it th I, I mean, my take is I prefer to keep them as domesticated pets. And ju just that. Oh, your takes are so boring. I'm so, boring, I'm so vanilla, I know. I know, you're not, you're not ready for this podcast, Matt. <laughs> you're not ready. I'm so open-minded, nothing really shocks me anymore. So I think, like, if you want to have a dog as a pet or something more, if you want a pet with benefits... <laughs> <so> <laughs> Hey, you can marry a tree now, apparently. I've seen, I've seen like, wacky articles. Like, you can marry a plane. A woman married a plane, didn't she? Yeah, I, I, I she read did. about this yeah. some, somewhere. So if you want a dog with benefits, if you want a blowjob beagle, you know? Uh, well, at least about marrying a plane, there's no fluids going anywhere. Like, hey, there's, there's a gasoline, <laughs> yeah. you know? But like the bodily stuff. Whereas if you've got animals, no. Well, you pick up no. their shit. You pick up well, a dog's poo, right? No, you're not going to win me over on this. I was thinking then, like, am I going to let him win me over? No, I'm not. It's, it's, it, no, it's too far. We'll, we'll turn Matt to the dark side soon. The more he does this podcast, I have this effect on people. I know? think my wife is going to hate you. I'm going to come home one day oh, and be no. like, pets, like, we, we need to look at them as multifunctional things. Yeah. <laughs> what? Honey, you only you have a cat or a dog? A dog. You have a dog? What do you do? You just take him on a walk and pet it? Let me show you what I've been doing with, what's your dog's name? Uh, Meg. Meg. Let me show you what I've been doing in Meg. <laughs> and you hear a slight whimper. You oh, know? poor Meg. No. <laughs> Don't think that. Maybe Meg enjoys it. You know? <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, so we'll turn you into the dark side. I, I feel like I'm a very um, amoral person in the sense that if it's funny, I say it. You know, and I think uh, I've, I've lost some friendships along the way. <laughs> I've definitely been sent to HR a few times when I had a day job. Because I think, you know, again, if it's funny, you say it. And humor does not know morality. A lot of moral things are funny. A lot of inappropriate things are really funny as well, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein, hilarious. Epstein's Island, hilarious. By the time, by, by the time this episode comes out, uh, I will be in LA. So nieces and nephews and listeners of the podcast, if you know anyone in LA, or if you have your own podcast in LA that I can guest on, just hit me up. Uh, if you have a good listenership, good fan base, I'm trying to reach new people out there and I uh, would love to get to know more LA-based YouTube creators because there's a lot of them, um, I, I think it didn't really make it all the way to the UK, but there are a lot of cool Asian creators out there, you know? Is there? Yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm doing David So's podcast, uh, Genius Brain, and I would love to meet the, you know, the Wong Fu people, the JK people, uh, all, all the stuff. Uh, I grew up with a lot of these YouTubers too. But yes, have you been to LA? Yeah, yeah, I've been a couple of times. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, just for like work and once. things. So yeah. Oh, um, la di da, work, <laughs> in, work in LA. I'm never getting paid. I'm doing Hell's Kitchen. I have a special guest spot at Hell's Kitchen. Uh, that, that is why I'm That going. is really cool. That's exciting. It's really cool. It's unpaid though. So okay, I have to pay exciting. my own flights, pay my own hotel. But again, it's like a, a chance to appear at a, a Hell's Kitchen without needing to cook. Are you going to meet Gordon? I, I hope so. I, I think he'll be there. Yeah, oh, so cool. I finally meet a big hero of mine. And then my agent was like, okay, maybe cool it on the Gordon reviews because you're going to meet <laughs> yeah. him soon. So cool it a little bit because my last review of Gordon, I, it was pretty scathing. It's, uh, uh, he he kind of messed up a ramen dish. So. Oh, no. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go there. But it should be cool, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, uh, you get stuck in traffic everywhere. It's the boring, annoying thing I hate about it. Oh, but. God. Because oh. they don't have like a, you know, like here we've got the underground and things like that. So you can get places. There, it's like, I, I said I should yeah. get the bus. I pretty much People just got laugh laughed at, at you. At. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Go home. Don't fuck your dog. Okay. Let's not let's not turn to the that's dark a, side. That's a pretty quickly. low bar, isn't it? Yeah. Go home, don't fuck your dog. I'll, I'll try. You will see how dark Matt can get. Matt's wife. Oh no. What's her name? Uh, Gemma. Gemma. Yeah. Prepare to see the dark side of Matt. <laughs> uh, but you know that's why we need to grow this podcast, listeners. So leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Share this podcast, your Instagram stories, and tell people about it because Matt is gonna lose all his other podcast jobs soon. From the crazy shit, crazy offensive shit he's gonna say. Amazing. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> See you next week.